Welcome everyone. Today, I'm going to give you a quick list of five design tips that will be sure to make your designs better. And this is especially for you beginners out there or those who struggle to make their designs just look good. These are all things you can implement today and are very straightforward. So let's get started. If you enjoyed this video, check out designcourse.com where you can learn UI, UX, CSS, and more with my custom interactive platform that makes learning fun and easy. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about tip number one, and that is to be safe, stick with a monochromatic color scheme. So take a look at this example here. You see that we have uh, quite a bit of color, actually. We have uh, oh, this blue in the background with two different shades. We also have this greenish, kind of this yellowish here, and then also this pink slash purple color right here. And you know this is pretty involved with color. So if you're a newcomer, I would advise to stay away from trying to use too much color. Instead, let's see how we can simplify this design and it will still be just as effective, if not more effective, when we simplify the colors. So first we'll go ahead and take the background and get rid of the color there. Now there is some slight color in, uh, worked into this background even though it looks gray, but we've simplified it because we no longer have two different containers. So we're going from this to this. Next up, let's go ahead and simply remove the blobs behind the icons. Those are completely just an aesthetic choice. We don't need them. All right, and then finally, let's just bring that together because we no longer have those two containers. So we're going from this, which is a lot of color, to this. And this is actually the design that I'm using in the final stages. This is a design, just a component or portion of the landing page for my wife's business. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is the one I'm using. It doesn't mean just because you don't have as much color that it's not as good. Um, and also when I say monochromatic, it doesn't just mean black and white, kind of like you see here. Uh, it just means really one color. White and, and black are just values. So this here would also be considered monochromatic uh, simply because we have one color that we're sticking with. So that's a great way to simplify your colors and to be safe is to stick with monochromatic color schemes. Now, next up, try to limit your use of strange fonts. I know you have so many uh, different fonts you have access to and when you're looking at the font drop down menus of your different design software, like there's literally like hundreds upon hundreds, if not thousands. Um, really, you only need a handful of fonts that you can use in pretty much all of your projects. So like right here, these are just some random fonts that I chose and there's two different fonts, one for the heading and then one for the actual text outside of the headings. And we could greatly improve that as you can see. Uh, it just looks kind of cheap between both, uh, between this one. And then when we stick to tried and true fonts with the play, uh, which is Playfair, Display, and then Poppins, uh, they just look so much better. The fonts here are cheap, doesn't look as good. Stick to those good fonts. And those good fonts, by the way, Here's just a list of five uh, sans serif fonts right here. These are the names of each one of them. And then here's five solid fonts here that are available. All of these are available in Figma and probably uh, Google fonts and such. Uh, here's good serif fonts as well. All right, so let's talk about the third tip and that is you probably need more white space. For some reason, I see newcomer designers the one thing they get wrong most often is they just kind of pack things together a little bit too closely. So you want to make space. Here's what I mean by that. Now if we look at the before uh, in the, the nav between these elements right here, you'll see they're real close together. Not much space between them. Um, also you can see over here with this main left column with the headline and subheadline, the call to action buttons, they're all kind of scrunched together. You don't want that. Give yourself room to breathe. I uh, And so as you can see, we have a lot of space here. And so we're making use of the space, as, which is one of those things that I see newcomer designers not doing very well. Make use of your available space. Separate things out with uh, good white space. All right, next up, number four, is align your elements to rows and columns. All right, so this is another section of the, uh, the website for my wife's business. And let's just try to break this down and start to fix it up in terms of alignment. All right, so the first thing we'll do is we'll take this headline and we're gonna push it over 
to the left here. So when we talk about columns and alignment, you'll see these are basically, it, they're all invisible pretty much, unless you explicitly design for them with borders and such. Um, your logo defines is usually the element that defines the first column, right to the left of the logo. I uh, Moving this over, it was okay to leave that centered, but to be safe, just align everything here to the left where the, based on the column that's established for your logo. Um, next up, take a look at the minutes right here. Uh, it kind of doesn't seem aligned, like not in the center, it's up a little bit. Let's move those down along these rows right here that are established. Next up, what about this type right here? I, I think we could fix that by pushing those up along these invisible rows established by the top of these elements. All right, and then finally, just to reinforce this left column, look at this, this text down here, it's out of place. It's not even centered, it looks strange. And I see newcomers do this all the time. Move that over here to the left, and now we have a nice solid column established right here to the left of the website. So we're going from this to this, and Subtle adjustments, and they make a really uh, big impact on the overall quality of a layout. And finally, use sites like dribble.com just to get inspiration. Be that right before you start a project, or maybe you're looking for maybe a specific uh, type of component, you're not sure exactly what pattern to use. Just going to a site like Dribble and just gaining inspiration, or even for color schemes, is just a great way to get started. Of course, this doesn't mean you're copying designs. It simply means you're just gaining inspiration. Um, visualizing and viewing other designs might spark your own creative ideas. You can put your own twists on them, and I find that that is even helpful for myself at times. I don't do it every single time because I've been doing this for so long, but when you're starting out, Really, you need to be a sponge. You need to take in everything. And a part of that is just gaining inspiration and being willing to gaining inspiration. Not everything has to come 100% from your own mind. So think about that. I, I think it's a really solid sort of point to make. And if you follow those five tips, I trust me, you're going to immediately improve your designs. There's going to be more things, but these are just a quick list of five tips that I think will help really well. Make sure to check out designcourse.com if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all later.